In the days after the election, there has been a lot of talk about the Democrat Party's dominance among young voters. And indeed, they did, in fact, dominate. Republican House candidates won the 45 to 64 age bracket by 10 points. They won the 65 and over group by even more than that. No surprise, given that the Democrats spent the entire you know, COVID uh, uh, pandemic trying to murder the elderly. But that edge disappears in the 30 to 44 demographic, where Democrats had a slight edge. It's almost 50-50, though. And then there is Gen Z, which Democrats won by nearly 30 points. If the exit poll data is any indication, nearly twice as many in the 18 to 29 group voted Democrat as voted Republican. So that's Gen Z and like the first part of, you know, the, the, the uh, later parts of, uh, of the millennial generation as well. It's no surprise to learn then that Gen Z is extremely mentally ill at least according to the latest study, uh, which uh, we get this from the Christian Post. It has the report. Nearly 70% of Generation Z, people born between 1997 and 2012, say their mental health was adversely impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, with 42% of adult members of the cohort reporting that they have been diagnosed with a mental health condition, and many of them say they are worried about the future, a new study from the data management firm Harmony Healthcare IT shows. The study, which is based on a survey of 1,055 Gen Z members from the ages of 18 to 24 in September, included 47% men, 45% women, 6% who identify as non-binary, and 2% trans-identified individuals. According to the report, some 57% of Gen Z adults struggle with their mental health uh, and reported taking medication to alleviate their condition and uh, paid an average of $44 monthly. The most frequently cited conditions were anxiety and depression, which were reported by 90% and 78% of respondents, respectively. Other conditions reported include ADHD, 27%, PTSD, 20%, OCD, 17%, eating disorders, 14%, and insomnia, 12%. Less than 10% reported uh, more diagnoses of bipolar disorder, uh, uh, addiction and substance abuse, and borderline personality disorder. While only one in five reported going to therapy for their mental health and um, spending an average of $149 monthly to do so, 87% of them found it helpful. Okay, so nearly half of an entire generation now qualify as mentally ill, according to their diagnosis. When you break it down, the numbers seem to become even more troubling. 20% of that group allegedly have been diagnosed with PTSD nearly 20% with OCD, 14% with an eating disorder. I mean, these are staggering figures. And however we make sense of it all, it's clear that something is very wrong here, to put it mildly. So how do we make sense of it? Well, to that end, I'll make three points. There are a lot more than three points worth making here, but uh, these are the three things that I'd like to focus on right now. First, mental illness is a real thing. There are legitimate mental illnesses that people suffer from. But the only way you end up with half of a generation diagnosed mentally ill is if the definition of mental illness has been steadily expanded so as to include everyone or as close to everyone as they can get. As I've warned for years, the so-called mental health industry has a vested interest, an obvious financial interest to the tune of many billions of dollars in finding, labeling, and medicating as many mental illnesses as they possibly can. We're at a point now where, you know, every emotion you might experience, every fear, every anxiety, every uncomfortable feeling or thought has been turned into an illness or the symptom of an illness. The human condition itself has been medicalized. And Gen Z has grown up in a culture where every inner experience outside of the norm however the hell the norm is defined, is considered a symptom of a mental disease. They have been conditioned to seek the solace of a mental, of a medical diagnosis, and so it is uh, no surprise that they have sought and found so many of them. Now, does that mean, just so I'm not misunderstood here, does that mean that the mental illness epidemic in young people is fake? No, it means that it's manufactured which is certainly not the same thing as fake. I mean, it's, there's something real happening here, but it is manufactured. Eventually, the entire generation, I mean, literally almost all of them, if these trends continue, will be diagnosed mentally ill. And although many of these newfound mental patients never should have been diagnosed to begin with, 
they will increasingly become as mentally sick as the medical industry says they are. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Why is that? Because they're not given the tools to cope with normal emotional and psychological experiences. They are made to rely on medication. They are made to feel helpless, like they simply cannot control their own minds or their own emotions or how they respond to those emotions. And the sicker they're made to feel, the sicker they'll become and act. I mean, think of all the people in Gen Z saying they have PTSD. You know, PTSD is something we normally think of, uh, of uh, you know, people, uh, veteran, combat veterans coming home from war. And, and think about all the things that they've experienced and seen. And they're suffering from PTSD. Now, that makes sense. You've been in a, in a truly traumatic environment. But to have 20% of this group saying they have PTSD, these, are, these aren't for the most part combat veterans we're talking about. And yes, they've been through some difficult things. The way that we handled COVID was, was absolutely inexcusable, of course. But post-traumatic stress disorder? These are, many of them, people living very comfortable lives. So where does the PTSD diagnosis comes from? Come, come from? It comes from kids and now young adults who have not been given the tools to cope with any difficult emotions at all. They just don't know how to deal with anything. And so any challenge at all becomes traumatic. And they're now suffering from PTSD. You know, the religion of leftism is anti-religion, which means that there isn't anyone to turn to when things don't go their way. There's no transcendent being pointing you toward truth and beauty. There are no customs or traditions to keep you on a righteous path. And there's certainly no app like Hallow to help leftists reclaim their peace. But we do have that. Hallow is an audio-guided prayer meditation app. It's the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. Hallow is like calm or headspace, but without all the woke nonsense because it's rooted in Christian faith. With thousands of meditations and prayers, I use Hallow to find peace after a long day of being yelled at by blue-haired Zazem weirdos. They have over 5,000 audio-guided prayers, meditations, and Christian music. You can pray alongside Jim Caviezel, Jonathan Rumi, Bishop Barron, Father Mike Schmitz, and Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Hallow helps me make prayer a priority. They can do the same for you. You can get an exclusive three-month trial at hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. That's hallow.com slash Matt Walsh. Reclaim your peace in this crazy world. Download Hallow today. Again, it's manufactured. There is an enormous generation-wide epidemic of Munchausen by proxy happening right now. That's basically what's happening. Speaking of which, the second point is that gender ideology is, without question, one of the primary driving forces here. And this is something that conservatives often get wrong, I think, because they confuse the chicken with the egg. It's not that so many in Gen Z identify as non-binary or trans or whatever because they're mentally ill. It's rather that so many are mentally ill because they have been given these identities through peer pressure and the powers of social contagion. The adolescent girl who first begins to fall into the trans trap, she's not sick. There's no mental illness driving that. At least there doesn't have to be. But once she falls into the trap completely, that is when the mental sickness begins to form and take hold. So for a good example of this phenomenon, here's the latest uh, TikTok innovation. One of the latest identities, fresh, uh, you know, it's one of of the the freshest ones uh, right out of the oven. It's called Tri-Gender. Watch this. So a couple of people might have been surprised by my transgender pin that I put on this morning. I figured it's about time that I came out and talked about my gender identity. I am trigender, which means like a triangle, I have three genders, male, female, and non-binary. And the difference between trigender and gender fluid is that I feel all three of these genders at the same time, all the time. It doesn't ever shift or change or where I feel one gender more strongly than the other, like gender fluid tends to be. Also, I should recognize and accept that a lot of people don't see non-binary as a third gender. They see it as something completely separate from the binary of male and female. Um, But for me, it's like a third gender. Or I guess you could call it a third identity. So how I feel gender-wise is like a man, like a woman, and as neither at the same time. I hope this clears things up, but let me know if you have any more questions. I'm happy to answer. I do have questions, actually, quite a lot. She says she's male, female, both, and neither at the same time. 
Now, that obviously makes no sense at all. It's the definition of a logical fallacy. You cannot be something and the opposite of that thing at the same time. It's like identifying as a married bachelor. It is a self-contradiction. So is the girl in the video simply crazy? Is she suffering from mental delusions? It's possible, and appearances would suggest that such is the case, but it need not be the case. What's more likely is that she's simply trying to fit in with the fad and find her own trendy twist on it. But the more that she tries to live in this nonsensical identity, the more confused she will actually become, the more detached from reality, and the more plagued by anxiety at the same time. I mean, keep in mind, as I am always saying, that that, um, the really sinister thing about gender ideology is that when someone becomes fully enthralled to it, They will have lost grip, not just on reality in general, but on the reality of themselves. And there's a lot that comes from this. And one of those things is anxiety, because anxiety is the unease that comes from uncertainty. It comes from the unknown. It's why, you know, you don't like uh, walking down into a dark basement at night because you don't know what's down there. And uh, your mind sort of fills in the gaps with all the terrifying possibilities. It's why Joe Biden's handlers become very nervous whenever he steps in front of a microphone because they have no idea what he's going to say or whatever childhood story he's going to make up. This is all anxiety. So gender ideology is like an anxiety machine because it makes a person's fundamental physical identity uncertain to themselves, creating a sort of unrelenting anxiety. It's no surprise then that Gen Z are reporting record levels of anxiety at precisely the time when these kinds of ideas are gaining prominence. Ideas which, in effect, turn out the intellectual lights, turning our minds into that dark, scary basement. Which brings me to my third point. Um, I said at the beginning that it's no surprise that Gen Z voted Democrat because so many are diagnosed mentally ill, and uh, I wasn't being facetious there. At least I wasn't being entirely facetious. facetious. There is a relationship it does actually make a lot of sense. Because we know with Gen Z, uh, not only does this make them susceptible to to identity politics and all that, that the Democrats can exploit, but also because they have all of this anxiety in their heads, uh, in their minds, and they don't know what to do with it, and they don't know how to cope with it. Again, having anxiety is a normal thing. It's part of the human condition. Nobody likes it, but it's part of the human condition. It's one of the things that makes us human is that we can experience anxiety. But the Democrat Party thrives on exploiting anxiety. That's how they motivate people to vote. If you listen to things that Gen Z, you know, their exit poll data, what were they concerned about? Why did they go to the poll to vote? It's things like climate change. You know, they're actually worried about that. They think the world's coming to an end. They think that America is systemically racist, that there are white supremacist murderers walking around out there. You know, uh, it, it, this, is, this is their view of the world. They're full of anxiety. The Democrat Party is able to exploit it and convert that into votes. Which is why, as I've been saying all along, we have a, a long road ahead in this fight for the culture. And the fight is, in, in every sense of the term, generational. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.